Here at Competitive Computing Consultants, Inc., we are an adoption and training company, so we are constantly building and presenting content that has to look good. In this video, we want to share some of the tips and tricks of PowerPoint to help you take your presentations and slide decks to the next level. First off, Microsoft has truly upped their game in the design department. When I start building a new presentation, I always leverage the built-in designer PowerPoint gives me. I'll start by typing in some keywords instead of my document title. My presentation title today is going to be The Earth Project, but the content is all about a tree planting initiative. I'm going to type tree planting here and select design ideas from the home tab. Now I can scroll through some amazing cover pages for my presentation. You can always change the keyword if you're not happy with your results. Now I can select the one I like best and update the title page to suit my presentation. Now I'm going to add a new slide here. This is going to be my agenda, so I'm going to pick a slide style and type in my agenda. Our first slide is going to be a project overview that tells the viewer what the presentation is about. I'm going to add a blank slide and begin typing the outline for this project. I will also add in some images to make the slide more appealing. I will navigate to the Insert tab and select the picture drop-down. I have a very specific image that I want to use that's saved to my desktop. I can also add in some stock images that are provided by Microsoft as well. Like we did earlier, I'm going to navigate to the Home tab and choose Design Ideas. I'll pick the design that I like the best. Now I'm going to head back to my agenda and I'm going to link the slide I just completed to the agenda. I'll highlight the agenda item and choose the insert tab. Now I'll select link. Next, I'll choose place in this document and select the slide number. After my presentation, I'm going to socialize the PowerPoint with the attendees. This is going to help them jump directly to the slide they need when they need them from that agenda. Next, I'd like to create a slide to highlight the timeline. I'm going to use SmartArt to create my timeline. I can access SmartArt by selecting this icon here or from the Insert tab. I have five dates on my timeline, so I'm going to pick the process heading to line up my dates horizontally. Use this arrow to open the content pane where you can insert the information that you want SmartArt to display for you on the slide. I have some other information I need to include on the slide, such as timeline barriers. I do not want this information to appear until we've reviewed the overall timeline. I have insert the additional information into separate text boxes. To make sure they're all lined up correctly, I'm going to select all of the text boxes together by choosing the first one, holding down my shift key, and choosing all of the others. Now under the Shape Format tab, I'm going to select the Align drop-down and choose Align Left. Then I'm going to choose Distribute Vertically to make sure everything is evenly spaced. Now I want to begin my animation. To start, I'll select the text box that includes the title and choose the Animation tab. Since I want this information to appear only when I'm ready to present it, I'll open the Animation Options and choose from the Entrance Animations. I will select Fade so that the information comes in slowly. By default, the animation will begin when I click the mouse or advance the slide. I'm going to keep this default setting for my first animation. I would like the bullet points beneath the title to appear following the title, so I'm going to select all of the text boxes holding my Shift key as I click them. Now I'll select that fade animation again and it will apply to all of the text boxes together. I want these to come in just after my title has appeared, instead of when I click. I'm going to choose With Previous. 
I'm also going to delay the start of the animation so that the bullets don't appear at the exact same time as the title. I can also adjust how long the animation will take to get to full opacity. I will keep the default setting as is. Now I'm going to head back to my agenda and link this slide to the agenda. I'm going to quickly add a slide for my budget using a table to outline my budget. My final slide is for open discussion, so I'm going to use some images and access the design options yet again. Don't forget to link your slides to your agenda. I also want to add an anonymous survey at the end of my PowerPoint to ensure that people are voicing their true feelings about the content I just presented. Not everyone likes to speak up in a meeting. From the Insert tab, I'm going to choose Forms. I can select from a list of forms and quizzes I've previously created, or I can create a brand new one from here. I'm going to select the Earth Project Partner Feedback form that I've already created. I can edit from here as well. I'm going to select Insert to attach it to the PowerPoint presentation. My attendees can fill the form out right from PowerPoint because of Microsoft application integration. I can gather the feedback by logging into the forms application. Before I complete my presentation, I want to create a smooth transition between my slides. I'm going to highlight all of the slides from the pane here and choose the transition tab. Now I'm going to select the transition option that I like best. Voila, within minutes, I've created a beautiful and interactive PowerPoint presentation. As Microsoft continues to bring you new and innovative features to help you in your workday, we're going to continue to highlight them to you, so don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.